The movie starts with the visual of a young blonde woman, dressed in a pink dress, standing in the middle of a baseball field. The excited crowd cheers for her, and the countdown screen is on for five minutes. At present, dark-haired Josie Jeller is an intelligent, reserved, and shy employee of the newspaper organization, Chicago Sun-Times. She is also the youngest copy editor in the organization. She is reserved, and often gets ignored. Even if she is the youngest worker, she has her office, stationary, and a dedicated quirky assistant at her disposal. As she steps into the office, her assistant mumbles out some words for her about standard English words. When she gets to her office, she tries to get her nonchalant secretary's attention, but he is talking over the phone. She asks for messages, which he rudely hands over to her. Disappointed that she cannot get his attention, she walks to her office and straightens the office tag on her door to perfection. She walks back into her office and settles down after opening the windows. Her promiscuous friend and co-worker, a brunette named Anita, stumbles into the office to tell her about a date she had with a certain worker, Roger. Managing editor grumpy Augustus Gus Strauss comes in to inform her that the computer is broken and he would need some stories edited. He hands her a couple of stories that he would need by the end of the day. Josie further corrects his grammar to his displeasure. Gus ignores her correction and has a quick conversation with Anita, where he mentions that dating is not allowed in the company contract. Anita is quick to debunk the fact that she's dating Roger. The two are at each other's throats. Gus asks Josie how many times he had fired Anita, and she answers five or six times. Anita peeps back into the office and replies eight times. Before Gus leaves her office, Josie walks with him to ask him if he got the story ideas she sent to him, and he replies that he did. She asks if she could report some of them. He tells her that she cannot perform the job of a reporter or a journalist, that she is calm and likes things in order. Journalists often take things by the short hairs. He appreciates her eagerness, but tells her that she cannot be a reporter yet. She tells him that she can be out of control, and he shifts her name tag on the desk to prove that, and she cannot. She changes it back to order once he leaves. During lunch, Anita tells Josie that she needs to have a man and proposes a double date with her and her man's friend. And when she refuses, Anita asks her when was the last time she had been on a date. Josie replies that the best thing is her career and she is dedicated to it, therefore has no time to date. Josie claims that the right guy is out there, but she's not going to kiss a bunch of losers to get her future man, further proving that she has not been kissed before and has never been in a real relationship. Her friends disagree, saying that kissing losers could be a lot of fun. Her friends further ask her if she has ever kissed a guy before, and she claims that she has. She talks wistfully and tearfully about the magical moment a man would kiss her, and how she would know he is the one. Cynthia replies that she is truly a writer. Back at her home, where she lives alone, a couple of picture frames are seen on the table. She is seen fixing a pillow, and asks her pet turtles about where the needlepoint should go. She steps into another room, and places it on a bed where there are other pillows sprawled on, which further shows her organized nature. The next day at work is a general meeting, where the tyrannical head of the company, and editor-in-chief, Rigford, commends another worker, Dowdery, for the investigative piece he wrote on pesticides in the supermarket, and then fires him because another news outlet had covered the same news. To Doherty's surprise and everyone else's, Rigford tells him to clear his cubicle and leave. Rigford began to narrate the story of how his son was allergic to peanuts, and he had no idea. So to fix the problem that not many parents know about children's lives, he asks that they do an undercover feature on a high school. He points to Josie and asks for her name, which she reveals in a subdued tone. He orders her that she would be going to South Glen, South High on Friday. Overjoyed, she leaves the meeting room happily, and shares her joy with Anita about her first undercover feature. Her friend doesn't share her excitement, and tells her to tone down her excitement a bit because the assignment is a huge piece, and she could be fired like the other co-worker, who is in fact the boss's cousin. Gus walks in, and says he would have everything fixed, unaware that she is excited about the news. She informs him that she would love to do it. She is crestfallen, as her friends don't think she can do it. She brings up an incident when she quizzed Anita in Spanish, when she wanted to seduce a guy in the mailroom. She then asks Gus when he wanted to learn to knit, who helped him to know how to work the needle, and he answers that it was her. Convinced, Gus further tells her that he would hold off her job for her, and she jumps excitedly in his arms. Her friend asks her the first thing she is going to do as a 17-year-old, and she picks a car. Josie visits her 23-year-old brother, Rob, and asks him for his vintage car. When he asks why she can't borrow her mother's, she answers she wants a cheap car. She promises to keep his vintage car for a couple of months, and although skeptical, he lets her borrow Bambi, which is his car's name. She then trades her car for his, and tells him he can name the car whatever he wants. She walks into his Hawaiian postage, and packaging store named Tiki Post, and asks him if he had applied to a college, and he gives a negative answer. She tries to convince him that he can start before the semester commences, and tells him that he can get a baseball scholarship. He reveals that he will not be going to college, or playing baseball. 
He claims that working in the store is his life. She tries to convince him that he is good at baseball and asks him if he ever wants to move out of his parents' house and get his place. Sarcastically, he answers that he should move out just to pay the bills and be as happy as she is. In happiness, she reveals that she has gotten a new assignment as an undercover agent and would be a senior classmate at South Glen South High. He reminds her of her pitiful high school experience. She flashes back to a time when many students in the cafeteria room chant her name, calling her Josie Grossi. Rob reveals that he made up the awful name, but didn't know that the nickname would stick, and she would be called that for the rest of her life. He further reminds her of her awful high school days, when she was a misfit and was treated poorly by her mates. She gets nauseous and walks to the restroom. While trying to flush, she breaks the handle. She grunts and sits down on the toilet seat. While she grabs a tissue, she recalls a time in high school, when a tissue was put in her bag as a prank, played by her classmates. Ashamed at the students jeering, high school Josie who is seen with tousled hair, acne, and braces, walks through the hallway with people cackling at her. From behind, another student pours sprite all over her books. Unaware of the harsh prank, she walks up to her classmate and crush, Billy Prince, and tells him that she had the opportunity to write him notes, since he wasn't in mathematics class. As she reaches out to her bag, the sprite falls through, making it seem as though she peed on herself. The reverie ends as she washes her hands in the restroom. She looks up in the mirror and sees her high school self, and both repeat that this is a very bad idea. Back at home, Josie attempts to change her appearance by looking over some hair magazines. She drives herself to the school in Rob's vintage car. Getting to her destination, which is South Glen South High, the car tire busts which gains the attention of everyone on campus. She is seen with a short hairstyle and steps out of the car in a furry feathery shirt and white jeans. Part of it rips as she walks into the school. Josie practices her introduction speech as she steps into the school. She is stopped by the security where she awkwardly babbles to the security man about being a high school student. He goes through her items thoroughly a recording device, a nail flyer, and much more are found and confiscated. The first bell rings and students disperse to their classes, leaving her to wander in the hallway alone. She runs to her first class. When she steps into the class, all attention is faced to her. She apologizes for being late, and the eccentric and menopausal teacher jokes about forgetting to take her medication. She overhears two girls making fun of her outfit. While she is asked to introduce herself, Guy Perkins, the popular male student, walks into the class. She is taken aback by his handsomeness and charm. As a form of punishment for being late, the teacher places a sombrero on her head for 10 minutes. All the classmates mock her. In the next class, she sits down on a chair, where the mean popular girls, Kristen Leosis, Gibby Zarevsky, and Kristen Davis approach her, and bully her off the chair. She finds another seat in front of the class. The next teacher introduces himself to her, calling himself Sam Calson who teaches literature. He quickly notices that he hasn't seen her before and blushing, she reveals that it's her first day. He begins to analyze Shakespeare's literacy piece, and a kind-hearted student. All these offers that Josie shares the book with her. He asks a literature question. After failed attempts to state what the meaning means, he looks out to the students to ask for the meaning. Josie raises her hand and states the right answer. A student mocks her by making sheep sounds. In response to her answer and how maturely she was able to deliver it, Sam walks up to her and asks her if she is sure about her age. She responds wearily at first that she is 17, and then responds later on in a stronger and stern tone. During lunch, she asks the lunchman about the content of the coleslaw, and he non-verbally answers by placing a large tub of coleslaw on the slab for her to see. She approaches the three popular girls, Kristen, Kristen, and Gibby. In the process of trying to sit with them, she spills the chocolate milk on her pants. She awkwardly sits down on the chair and begins to quiz them. She asks them about their hopes and dreams after high school, which they mock her for. Guy Perkins walks up to her and introduces himself formally. She begins to laugh uncontrollably, which leads the guy to ask if she is in special education. The other girls mock her, and she decides to leave the cafeteria, embarrassed. During gym, girls are on the field, with the banner showing presidential fitness testing this week. Running, she trips and falls with the coach yelling that she better perform well. She asks the coach for water in a breathless tone. She rejects her and tells her to continue, and that if she fails gym, she would never get into college. Aware that that is a known trick in high school by gym teachers, Josie inquires if they are still telling such lies. In response, the coach orders her to do 20 push-ups. At the end of the school day, she notices that Rob's car is no longer parked where she put it. All these informs her that as a tradition to all new students, the popular students who are Kristen, Gibby, and Guy hide the cars as a form of joke, while they mockingly watch them search for them. Aldi shows dislike for the group, calling them the Lemmings, while the group sees her as a boring geek. 
Josie tries to make a conversation with Aldi's by stating she likes her name, and Josie awkwardly speaks about her being named after a singing cat. The girl invites her to go out to eat, and she agrees. During lunch, Josie inquires about what she wants to be when she grows up. She responds with multiple things, saying a novelist, a painter, a potter, and a doctor, and then says she wants to go to a North Southern University. Excited Josie replies that she went there, and then lies that she went to use the restroom there, meanwhile she schooled there. Josie gets a call from her editor, Gus whom she introduces as her dad. Excusing herself, she walks to the restroom, and he asks her about the story she wants to pitch about cafeteria food. He rejects her idea and tells her to write about something that would sell like calumny and bribery. He disconnects the phone after telling her to find something better to report on. Aldi's and Josie return to school to find her car. It is found on the field, where the marching band is practicing. Aldi's asks her how good she is at calculus, and Josie replies that she is very good. In response, Aldi's asks her to join the calculus team, where they usually have pizza study groups. She agrees to join the denominators, which is the smartest group in school. In the next scene, Josie is seen wearing their t-shirts and walking down the hallway as a group. They all open lockers and pull out their calculators. They go to a competition where she wins the winning score by 50 to 45 against another school. Her teammates celebrate her. Back in literature class, Aldi's reads words from Shakespeare's piece, and Sam asks the students what Shakespeare meant by the character Carolyn hiding her disguise as a man. After a student gets it wrong, Sam further explains what he means. He says that when in disguise, people feel no fear. People do things that they would do in ordinary life. He asks a student about what he would do when he goes out in football attire. The boy responds in a high and aggressive voice that they beat the other opponents. Sam nods and makes a joke that they kick, yell and touch other people's inappropriately. He further explains that disguise changes people's behavior. He tells a story of his hockey experience and says that he was afraid to do it. He says that his father bought him a helmet signed by a popular hockey player. He tells the story that every time he puts on the hockey helmet, he is a brand new person and performs better. He mentions that he even got kicked out of the game for fighting. The point is that the disguise can be liberating and help you do things that you can get away with. And for Carolyn, the costume opens up an opportunity for the great love of her life. Sam then asks Josie to read Act 5, Scene 2. She stands up to read. While reading she gets flashbacks of her old high school self. In the flashback, she sees her young self reading a romantic poem in front of the class and people making fun of her. She stares in front of her crush, Billy Prince who is amused by her presentation. Still in the flashback, a friend rushes to the library to ask her what she wants most in high school, and Josie responds that she wants to be the popular girl in school, and for Billy to ask her out. Her friend reveals that it is going to happen, and Josie rejoices that Billy likes her poem and also wants to take her to prom. Josie flashes out of the flashback after the bell rings. In the hallway, she attempts to take something from her locker, while avoiding a couple getting cozy. The announcer says that voting for the prom has commenced, and the theme is the millennium. The students rejoice. On the way home, Aldi's, Josie, and Aldi's little sister sing along to a song in a loud voice, while sipping on shakes. They stop by the old drive-in, which is infamously called the court where underage drinking and promiscuity happen. A man stops by the window to chase them away, and that their kind doesn't belong there. Josie asks Aldi's if she has ever wanted to go to the court, and she responds that it is lame, and that people just get drunk over there. Josie realizes that Aldi's secretly wants to be popular. Gus slams a rival newspaper to her desk with the editorial showing the court site for parties, drugs and weekend arrests, he is disappointed that she didn't do her job, and another organization reported it. He reads the story to her, and she tries to defend it. He tells her to become friends with the popular people who attend the court, to get more stories. He tells her to get closer to them. She explains that she cannot get close to the popular kids, because they do not like her. He tells her that both their jobs depend on it. Jokingly, she corrects his grammar again, and he sends her out. She goes to her parents' home to see Rob watching baseball. She chastises him for making a mess, and he reveals to her that their parents went out. She rants to him about how she can't be friends with the popular kids. She has always wanted to be accepted, but they make fun of her. In an attempt to make her feel better, he begins to extol her by telling her that she is not Josie Grossi anymore, and is now successful. He tells her that she just needs one person to notice that she is cool, and others will accept her. He lets her chant that she is not Josie Grossi anymore, and she does so with enthusiasm. The next morning, a van is seen parked in front of the school. A man walks out, who appears to be her co-worker at Chicago Sun-Times. He takes her into the van, and gives her a hidden camera in the form of a brooch. When she opposes it, Gus's voice is heard, as he tells her that he would review the story for her. All she has to do is record all of the conversations. George watches her through a monitor from the van. Josie steps into the hallway, and calls out for the popular girls. In the process, she trips over and falls. Back in literature class, Josie is seen reading her right up to the students. Sam stares at her in adoration, as she does. In the office, Anita watches Josie in the monitor 
monitor read her poem, and asks Gus if he has ever been in love. He hesitantly answers that he doesn't know what love is, and his career doesn't allow for that. She tells him to go out once in a while. He asks her to leave him alone, and states that he has a lot of work to do. She offers to help him out with his work, which sparks a budding romance between the two. Back in South Glen South High, Josie walks back to her locker, and sees the same couple, and jokingly inquires about the schedule that they could work with. Aldi's offers another extra notebook in her locker, and asks if they would be seeing each other at 7.30 tonight. Josie responds gloomily yes, and then overhears Guy telling his friends about a cool band that would be playing at the party. She decides to go to the party, instead of studying with Aldi's. She dresses up in a black gown, and goes to the party, forgetting that she is meant to meet with Aldi's. She is stopped by the security who asks if she would be drinking tonight, and she responds that she would not be drinking as she is 17. He responds by inking the words on her hand Delozer. The three girls, Kristen, Gibby, and Kristen are seen synchronized dancing, as the band plays. Josie sees Sam in the club with a woman. He introduces the woman as his girlfriend, Laura, who is visiting from New York. He introduces Josie as one of his students. Laura reveals that Sam would be moving to New York. Josie is disappointed by the news, and soon covers it up when Laura reveals that her firm has tickets to the net game, and she awkwardly says that she loves baseball. George has a girl in his van as he watches over Josie's performance at the party. Josie walks to the three popular girls, and tries to make conversation with them, but they ignore her. She asks a couple of older men, if she can sit with them on the couch. One of them tries to make conversation with her, and he offers her cake. He tells her that the cake is infused with vitamins A, B, and D. George sees from the watch room that Josie is about to consume the cake. He watches her eat it, and it appears to be an infused brownie. She is seen laughing hysterically on the couch, after a few minutes as she loses her senses. She gets up to dance and steps on stage, where she dances. People stare and laugh at her, but soon the popular girls and even Sam begin to feel her groove, and eventually feel entertained by her. Still without any control over her senses, Josie goes home and narrates her fun night to an invisible Rob, while eating a pie. She eventually falls asleep in the kitchen, and wakes up in the morning, realizing that she is late for school, she rushes out of the house. Unknown to her, the word loser from the inked word Deloser is stamped on her forehead. She goes to school. The students call her a loser, without her knowledge and mock her. She rushes to the restroom, where she sees the words on her forehead in her reflection. Upset, she cleans up the inked words, and then gets nauseated so she throws up. She hysterically cries on the restroom floor. There is a flashback as she remembers her high school prom. She is seen wearing a large pink prom dress. Billy Prince calls her saying he is ready for the date, and she runs outside. Billy Prince is seen in a limousine and when she greets him, another girl steps out of the limousine, who appears to be Billy's real date. Josie quickly realizes that it is a setup, and she is not going to the prom with him. To humiliate her, Billy throws an egg at her, and further humiliates her by ruining her dress. While he drives off, she cries on the floor. When her mother calls out, she runs away. In the present time, she is seen running out of the restroom and crying. She leaves the restroom in a frantic state and in the process, gets hit by the front door. She wakes up to see her brother, Rob standing over her. He reveals that he enrolled in the school, to help her out with her mission. She tells him that he can't be popular in one day. The next scene opens with a couple of students chanting his name in the cafeteria. She sees him consuming all of the coleslaw in the bucket. The students rejoice as he finishes everything, and he chants that he is the coleslaw king of the world. He high-fives a couple of students, and some girls call him good-looking. Aldi's who is upset with Josie that she missed the study session, walks up to Josie to tell her that she was waiting for her at her Nana's place. Josie mentions that she forgot. Upset, Aldi's says that Josie shouldn't sit with the denominators at lunch today. It's senior night, and the students are at the fair to raise some money for the prom. She goes on a ride on the Ferris wheel, and the ride operator asks her if she has a partner. She says no. Sam overhears that the man is calling out for a partner for Josie, and offers to go on a ride with her. While the ride commences, Sam reveals that he is scared of heights, as they are on the Ferris wheel. When some kids make fun of her, Sam comforts her, and tells her that some boys will mature in time. He talks about Laura whom he has been dating for five years, and the move to New York which he is adamant about. He promises Josie that when she is his age, a lot of guys will want her. She states that he is saying nice things because he is her teacher and he refuses, saying that he shouldn't be saying it because he is her teacher. He is beginning to have feelings for her. Under the bleachers, Rob tries to make Josie popular by cooking up a story that Josie is very rich, and an heiress to a fortune. He spreads the lie to other students. He tells the popular girls, that Josie spends her time on a yacht with her rich family. He further tells the baseball players that he used to go out with Josie, and she dumped him but they are still very good friends. They are then interested in being friends with her. While in class, Josie sees her co-worker and friend, Anita walking past her classroom. Sam notices her talking to someone, and assumes that Anita is present for the adult discussion with the students. Nervously, she tells them an explicit story. In an attempt to talk to her, Josie knowingly dumps her books to the floor, and when Anita tries to pick them up, they whisper, Anita reveals that she wanted to say hi to her. 
Anita then continues her talk and have the students do some tasks related to the talk. Tracy, a bubbly classmate seated beside Josie, reveals that she is ready for a new experience for the first time, and Josie advises her to take her time, and talks about penguins explaining how they meet and spend the rest of their lives together. Tracy is confused by the word penguin. While Sam overhears, he steps in to explain that it's an analogy. The announcer reveals that there is bad news. Another school would be doing the Millennium Prom. There is pandemonium within the classmates. Sam calms the room and suggests that they try to find another idea for prom. Anita's suggestion for Under the Sea and Sam's suggestion for the 80s are loudly rejected by the class. Rob stands and asks that Josie should come up with a suggestion. She then suggests famous couples throughout history. Rob and the rest of the classmates agree and applaud the idea. It is the start of Josie's popularity. She is seen walking down hand in hand with the three girls. She is also seen having fun painting a mural with Sam and also picking up CDs with him. The office workers watch over her budding romance with the teacher. While in the mall with the three popular girls, she stealthily calls Gus and tells a story idea of girls who buy expensive clothes at the mall, wear them and return with the tags up. Gus rejects her idea and hangs up on her. On the bleachers, Josie and the three girls watch Rob play baseball and rejoice with him as he scores. The coach informs Rob that he would play pro ball, as there would be college scouts watching for him in the championship game. Rob seems to be happy about where he is now, playing ball in high school. The popular girls talk to Josie about how she transitioned well into the group and how many people try to get into their group but fail. Josie then notices Guy checking her out and blushes that he may be interested in her. Cheerily, Josie walks into the Chicago Sun-Times office and goes for the general meeting organized by Rigford. A woman is seen leaving while crying, as she has probably just been fired. Josie apologizes for being late. He asks for the status of her high school story. She doesn't have much to say, which leads him to explode on her. He orders that he wants the story in two weeks, if not she would be fired, along with Gus. Josie attends a teen house party. Rob reveals to her that he is taking Tracy to the dance. Josie starts to tell him that it is illegal to date someone who is 16 years old, but Guy interrupts them and pulls her over for a talk. Rob gets into a conversation with Tracy, who asks him what he wants to be in the future, and he answers that he wants to be a ball player. She then asks what if he doesn't make it, and unknowingly mocks those who never make it and work at a post office. He feels bad as that is his real life. Guy takes Josie upstairs and tried to take her to a room. She tries to say that they should go to another room, but he says that other rooms have been booked by couples. They both sit on the bed. He tells her that she knows about the rumor of him planning to ask her out to prom. He stated that he wanted to do it face to face. She happily agrees to go to the prom with him and hopes that history would not repeat itself this time around. Both Josie and Rob walk through South Glen South High hallway with people greeting them as their popularity is heightened. Josie being the love interest of Guy and Rob being the talented ball player. Josie is happy that she finally fits in. During recess, Kristen and Gibby asks who does Archie date. Josie responds both Betty and Veronica. Sam who overhears, states to Josie that Betty was the one Archie truly liked, and she was fun, unlike Veronica who had great legs and was high maintenance. They both sit down and he tells her that he got an admission officer at Dartmouth University to talk to her after showing him her writings. Even though she appreciates him, she lies that she didn't want to go to college. He encourages her to go to college and chase her dreams. From the monitor, Gus stares at how lovingly Sam looks at Josie and suddenly gets an idea. Back at Chicago Sun-Times, Gus reveals to Josie that Sam is her story, and she should report on the fact that a teacher is falling for a student. She instantly rejects it. Gus says that Sam is immoral and is trying to sleep with the student. He then reveals that the editor-in-chief, Rigford, wants the story of both of them. She is confused about doing it because she doesn't think it's real, and she doesn't want to hurt Sam. On prom night, she goes to Rob's house dressed as Carolyn and Shakespeare, and appreciates him for everything he has done for her, and embraces him. Guy shows up in a limousine, she thinks he is about to throw something at her, but instead he brings out a rose. They head to the prom. The three popular girls, Kristen and Gibby are dressed as Barbies. Kristen practices her surprise face in case she wins prom queen. Rob and his date, Tracy are dancing. She almost slips so he asks that they sit down. She reveals that he's her penguin and wants him to sleep with her. He rejects her gently and subtly changes the topic by going to get them punch. All these in the denominator show up in a group dressed as DNA, which the popular kids mock. It's time for the announcement of the court princesses and princes. Kristen, Gibby, and Kristen are appointed as princesses and the princes are Thomas, Jason, and Rob. The prom king is Guy Perkins. The prom queen is announced to be Josie Jeller and everyone rejoices, including people at Chicago Sun-Times. Guy and Josie dance under the disco ball, as their first dance is court king and queen. 
He asks her what he thinks about the moment, and she says she was thinking about how Shakespeare would describe the moment. He tells her that she rocks her world, and she is a very beautiful person and stealthily, she looks at Sam who watches her in adoration. Sam approaches her and commends her for being a beautiful prom queen. He asks her to dance which she accepts. Guy asks Aldis to dance which she also accepts. It is seen as an alleged act of friendship. She steps out of her DNA costume and is wearing a beautiful blue jumpsuit. Sam talks about how prom is very important to Josie. She asks about his girlfriend, Laura. He replies that they broke up last week. She awkwardly says that prom comes from the word promenade, and he can't promenade alone. He tells her that she is amazing and asks her about Dartmouth. She decides that she wants to tell him the truth about her identity. She removes the brooch to avoid the news organization hearing what she has to say. She says that there is something that she wants to tell him about. Josie suspiciously watches Guy dance with Aldis, and also sees that the cool kids are up to something when they have a dog food can in their hands. It seems that they want to mess with Aldis. Josie imagines Aldis as her 17-year-old self, and feels the need to protect her. Josie steps in before the dog food is dumped on Aldis, and the can falls on all three popular girls. The three chastise her for being a loser, and not having their backs. They tell her that she doesn't deserve to be prom queen and in response, Josie throws the crown to the floor, and reveals her true identity to them. Hearing that she is a reporter, Sam leaves the dance. Josie also reveals that Rob is her brother. Josie chastises the popular girls for thinking that real life is high school, and praises Aldis for her kind nature. After her speech, she races after Sam, and people cheer her speech by clapping. George walks to her, asking if she got something on Sam Kelson, because he couldn't record as her brooch was off. Sam overhears and confronts her about being a liar. She tells him that she wouldn't do a story about him. He is upset with her, and she proposes that they spend time together so that he can know the real her. Before he leaves, he says he can't look at her the same way. Rob is also upset with her, that she broke the news right before the baseball championship. He mentions that, the only time that he has been happy in the past few five years is when he was in high school. He tells her how he loved helping the boys out in the practice baseball. He walks away from her, upset. There is a news segment on Josie blowing her cover on the news page. Gus is very upset at her for blowing both their cases, and putting their jobs on the line. Upset, Josie tells him that he will have a story no matter what. She goes up to South Glen South High School, and asks the coach for a favor. She asks that her brother has to come to the game, in return she would let important sports reporters come to the game. She then writes a story titled Never Been Kissed where she talks about how she has never been kissed or had a real relationship. In the article, she talks about her former life in high school, and how she was always a misfit. She further remarks on Guy's confidence, Gibby, Kirsten, Kristen's beauty, Aldis's intelligence, and her love for Sam. She states that she would be present at the championship game, and would stand on the field to wait for him to give her a first real kiss. Because of her popularity, the press is seen at the championship game to report on her and Kelson. She gets nervous about the amount of press in the stadium, and wonders if Sam would show up. Aldis and Anita comfort her and encourage her that she can do it. While she walks to the field, the crowd chants for her. The five-minute countdown starts. The time runs out, and he doesn't show up. She is disappointed, so is the crowd. The crowd then begins to cheer as Sam shows up at the field. He rushes to her and kisses her. When they pull away, he apologizes for being late as it took forever to get there, and she answers that she knows exactly what he means by that. Gus also kisses Anita, proving his attraction to her. Rob is seen wearing an assistant coach jacket. The movie ends with both Josie and Sam kissing on the field. 